This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday in Cary, Ohio. Again, the OLC Shrine Cafeteria for some barbecue and bingo. So put away your Thursday plans and head on down to the OLC Shrine Cafeteria to get some of that delicious Mad Canadian barbecue food. And be sure to check out his social media, Facebook and Twitter for more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloop Guy is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a hand-roasted micro-batch coffee company. All of your orders are fresh roasted to order, which means they aren't sitting around in a warehouse or a truck or a shelf or in the warehouse before the warehouse. Then it gets sent to the warehouse in the back of the grocery. None of that. It's it's roasted, it's put in a box, and it's shipped directly to your door. And if you live near Toledo or Perrysburg, you can go pick it up for yourself, too. You don't even have to wait for it to be shipped. Uh, you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, Sloop Cats, and how's it going, YouTube chat? Hope everyone's hope everyone had a good weekend here. But guys, with a victory, not part of not part of the chaos that no. we'll get to on Tuesday's episode. No, it was a chaos. It was a cha- Kyle. Uh, the Friday episode was titled "Chaos: Another Chaos Weekend?" Question mark. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but definitely as much chaos as there was, there was a lot more almost chaos. But tune into our Tuesday episode for that. Right now we're talking about the 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 Monday episode. We're doing our standard and grade. So Kyle, let's get right into that. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing today? Good sir. Uh, I have no complaints that I'm going to air publicly. (laughs) Kyle, uh, standard and grade. We always go over on these. So let's try not to go too far over today. And, uh, let's, let's get right into it. Nomad who died. Why, why are there so many F's in my chat? (laughs) I'll let you try to figure that out. But for those who did not watch the game, Buckeyes come up with a victory 26 to 17, a nine point victory which is the biggest I'm trying to, trying to think how to word this it's the it's the worst loss for Nebraska this year it is uh, all of Nebraska's losses as Kyle pointed out on the Thursday episode all of Nebraska's losses came by less than a score and Ohio State eclipsed that uh by winning by 9 points Ohio State wins 26 to 17 on the road yeah. in Lincoln Nebraska um it's not what it's not what Ohio State fans wanted. You know, we wanted an Ohio State game, we got a Nebraska game. This is what all of Nebraska's games against good opponents have looked like all year. This is what mm-hmm. all of Nebraska's losses have looked like all year. We wanted an Ohio State game, we got a Nebraska game. Sorry. Yeah. This is who Nebraska is. We were simply playing some, you know, we like to think of Ohio state as like the protagonist in the story, right? They're the lead character in the story. Well, I hate to break it to you. We were just like Nebraska opponent D in this story. We were just the next, the next team in the story that is Nebraska 2021. This was their yeah. story. We were just playing our role in it. Yeah. Ohio state still was moving the ball. I thought overall pretty well. They had pretty much 500 total yards on offense, but not not the way that Ohio State would want to. Only 90 yards on the ground, three yards per rush. Yeah. And they th- and, and CJ threw the ball 54 times. 54. Definitely, yeah. definitely not, definitely not what they wanted to do, but. I mean, you got to give credit to Nebraska. This is Nebraska's defense 
uh, what they've done all year so far, and they were able to really contain Ohio State and make them pretty much one-dimensional here. Yeah, and, you know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, well, Henderson this, and they didn't give the Henderson the ball enough, and 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 yada, yada, yada. But, like, they gave him the ball 21 times, which is a lot for how many carries they've been giving him so far this year. I think my question is where were the other running backs? There should have been more running there. They should have run the ball more, but master Teague and Mayan Williams had a combined rushing total of three, three carries between the two of them. Yeah. It's, I don't know. In the longest run, I, I think, I think Ohio State only had two, rushing attempts that went more than 10 yards. And, and the longest run was Henderson on one drive. It, and there was one drive when Ohio State was moving the ball really well until they got to the red zone, which we'll get into that in a little bit here. But, yeah, they, they this is two weeks in a row now, Jared, where Ohio State's struggling to run the ball. Now, you can look at the competition that they played. Penn State, a good defense. Nebraska, Pretty good defense too. They they gotta they gotta find something to change here because the the whole oh you play a good defense you're not going to run the ball well that's that's got to change that's right. got to change when you move it on more into November and then into the postseason too you got to find ways to move the ball on the ground here. Yeah, I'm you know I'm starting to wonder if the let's play our tackles as guards experiment is not working um mm-hmm. paris johnson jr i think has a bright future at ohio state he struggled uh not for the first time at guard this 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 season um I, again i think he has a bright future at ohio state i really do but he's he's had he had a real bad game uh now granted he's a second year kid going against the sixth year senior which is uh tough it's tough but you know only one of those guys was a five-star recruit and it was paris um i understand the need to get some of those guys on the field so that they don't transfer so they don't get disgruntled but i get it on one hand i get it but on the other hand um it's it's not it's not it's not looking great at the moment it's it's not working the interior offensive line the interior and but they they do a great job in pass protection but for from a running standpoint from a running standpoint uh the the tackles as guards is not working it's not working against good defensive tackles which is really hurting ohio state with their interior run game and it is hurting Ohio State in the red zone, which was another point of struggle for Ohio State this week. Uh, now, thankfully, Ohio State has no struggle ruggle on the team. He goes four for four on field goals, which, you know, in a nine point game, it's it's nice to have a it's nice to have a kicker. Like I said, with no struggle, no struggle, no struggle, no a ruggle uh, is automatics. Still has not missed yet this season. Um I, yeah, it's there's a lot not working that needs to be addressed, but I think it's all fixable. Yeah, and well, let, let's get right into it here from our grading here. Uh, so Nomad, we'll I'm not a hundred. Per- no, Nomad says you should <laughs> trademark it. Uh, me calling him no struggle ruggle. I'm not a hundred percent. That popped into my head, and I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, that it's original. I like I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure I didn't steal it from someone. Otherwise, I I would already have it. Like, well, can you trademark something with someone else's name in it? I don't know. Well, let's let's start with the struggle, and that's the offensive line here, Jared. What would you what would you grade the offensive line in this game? Um, based off of the expectation that we have for them, which is that they're supposed to be one of the best offensive lines in all of college football. I got to give him an F. Uh, give Fie- him a, I, I, I almost called him fields. Uh, you had Stroud with a guy in his face immediately 
on regular occasions. Uh, the interior offensive line is still struggling. Uh, Henderson only had 4.4 yards per carry, a long of 22. F. Well, I was being kind of, I'm giving him a D. I, I think overall, they, they only they only let up two sacks for the game for, for how much blitzing Nebraska did. Only to only only let up two sacks, but not giving any any wiggle room for the running backs to make anything happen. It felt like C.J. Stroud was constantly having to move in the pocket. Didn't feel comfortable a lot of the time there. So how and, so? And, and and to go and to go back to your expectations, yeah, I'd, I'd give him a D. I mean, I guess we can just effort. compromise and say D minus. But how many of that lack of sack is was Stroud? Getting yeah. out of the pocket and having to throw the ball away or having to, you know, th- there was a there was a pass play. I want to say it was in the first quarter where you had Henderson. No, excuse me. You had Alave going down the field wide open. But because Stroud got flushed from, you know, you want to talk about why maybe is JSN getting a lot of the catches in this game and why wasn't the lava getting more of them? Well, it's because JSN's running the short routes and Stroud was getting flushed out of the pocket constantly. There was on at least one, I'm sure more occasions where Stroud had a lava open down the field, but was forced out of the pocket and you can't throw. I don't care if you're Justin Fields or who you are. If you're if you have to flush out of the pocket to the right and Chris Olave is going wide open down the field, all the way down the field on the left side of the field, you're not going to get that ball to him. And yep. that's just not it's not possible. Yep. Absolutely. So, I, we'll so compromise, you, you can we'll compromise point at that we'll lack say, of sacks, but that lack of sacks is a credit to Stroud more than it is a credit to the offensive line, in my opinion. Right, well, we'll compromise and say D minus tight ends here. Tight end. I'd give them a C minus. I'd give them a C minus. They're, they're, they're as equal to the run game. And there were, it just seems to be a consistent thing with Ruckert. As much as I love Ruckert here, I, there's balls that he should be, he should be catching and he's not here. And it's starting Agreed. to become a problem. So why, be, why, why the, gen- I'm, I have to ask you why the generous, why the, gen- they're, they're not run blocking. I mean, the run blocking was poor this game. Right. Uh, I, 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 so I don't, I don't know why we're giving him any credit in that area. Uh, Rucker only had three catches for 13 yards, had a drop or two in this game. He's been dropping the ball all year. It's not an isolated incident. I feel right, like right, I'm, I feel like I'm coming out real negative in this episode. Um, all right. All right. We'll, we'll, we can drop him to a D then. Let's, we'll, we'll drop the tight ends to a D there. And, and, and it's not Rucker too. I think there was some other ones. Oh, what was it? There was a. I thought there was a dumb penalty by another tight end too. I can't. I can't remember. Yeah, it was on special teams. I thought it was. Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank on it, but we'll we'll move on. Uh, <laughs> wide receivers here, Jared. Yeah, I think wide receivers is probably the the lone the lone Positive. good position that happened. <laughs> yeah, on this offense here. Yeah. So I, uh, go go ahead. So as all as a whole, the whole wide receiver core as a group, I'd, I'd give them an A. Honestly, like yeah. I mean, Jason, fifteen catches, two hundred and forty yards, and Olave seven for sixty one, and Fleming should have had should have had a that that was a catch that Absolutely. was a catch there one hundred percent that, that oh, I don't even want to talk about instant replays. It's why, why, why have it? Why have it if if they still can't if they still can't see it? Obviously, so yeah, I get I give the wide receivers an A. I, I, I like what I'm seeing from Marvin Harrison Jr. I like I like Fleming there, um, and what what he's able to uh, showcase to is just this this wide receiver um, group is just a cheat code this year. It really yeah. is. Yeah, and like. You know, I think that like Alave's touchdown was some of the pretty smoothest uh, route running you'll ever see. Um, well, JS- even the one that 
JSN. Even the one, even the one that the one that JSN scored, it's thanks to Olave going down and making blocks too. He he didn't yeah. just block one. He, he he blocked one and went on to the next person, blocked a second person too. That's just that's that's probably more amazing than Jackson Smith and Njimba scoring the touchdown. It was Olave giving that effort to go down the field with him and and being his lead blocker. Yeah, and I mean, 15 catches, 240 yards, 16 per... He he had 15 receptions, averaging 16 per reception. Now, of course, that the, the 175 helps that out a lot, but regardless, yeah. regardless, um, yeah, uh, he's he's going to be the lone Buckeye in the in the thumbnail. I promise you this uh, for our YouTube audience. Uh, mm-hmm. Today's thumbnail will be brought to you by Jackson Smith and Jimba. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see here. So that we're giving us the eight. CJ Stroud uh, running backs. Oh, running backs. Um, I mean, Henderson probably had one of his worst days. Um, they just didn't give the ball to, to Teague or to Mayan. The offensive line was, wasn't helping. Um, so, so how, how much of the rating here? I know we haven't rated them yet, but how much of the rating do you take to the offensive line and how much do you give blame to the running backs as well? I, it's, 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 it's hard because they're not separate. It's a it's a football team. It's a football team. You know what I mean? Like it's you can't run without both the running back and the and the offensive line doing their job. It's it's I but I I just don't I didn't see missed opportunities by Henderson. Um and the coaches took Mayan Williams and Master Teague out of the game. So I, I, it's, it's, it's almost an impossible task. I just kind of maybe want to give them, give them a B minus, but a B minus with a bit of a shrug. Um, yeah, they, I was they, going to, they, I was going to, I was going to say worse. I was going to say a C minus. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's just so impossible to, again, it's not, it's not like, it's not like Teague left opportunities on the field and it's not like you can blame Williams or excuse me, I don't think Henderson left any opportunities on the field and it's not like you can blame Tiger Williams for not doing anything when they just, their numbers weren't called. So I don't know. Like it's, a, it's, it's an impossible, it's, impo- it's an impossibility to properly grade these running backs when they just didn't have any opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I don't know. Just meet you somewhere in the middle and do a C plus, I guess, but. All right. All right. All right. And CJ Stroud here. Um, 36 for 54, 405 yards, two touchdowns and two interceptions for the game. Uh, not, not his best game. Uh, he was getting no help from, from the running game that, that should be said. He wasn't getting near the clean pocket that he's used to getting. Um, it's, it wasn't his best game. Yeah. The, the first, the first interception, that was just a good play on the, on Nebraska's DB for that pick, but that second interception that he threw, you, you got to throw that ball away. That, that was just a dumb throw that he was just trying to make a play happen and just threw it into like, yeah, it was at least double coverage. I don't know if there was a trip. I don't know if there was a third on <laughs> Olave in that, on that play, but at least two, two players that he threw it to. Yeah. Uh, so, it's, uh, I, I don't... I'd probably, I'd probably give, I'd probably give um, CJ Stroud probably, Probably a C as well. He, he's, he made some plays. He made some great throws, but Jason, I think, really made him look better because of the route running and the catchability that uh, Jackson Smith and Jimba had in that game. Yeah. But I, I, I'd probably give I probably give CJ Stroud probably like a C, C minus. Yeah, that's that's fine. I, I'm I he put up a ton of yards, but he had to throw the ball 54 times to do it. So, you know. He puts up a ton of yards, but you know what? He had less of an average than Adrian Martinez had. He did. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. I'm I'm with you, Kyle. That's that's a proper grading, in my opinion. Man, there was a time. 
there was a time, and I have to see if I can find the stats. I don't know if I can in time. There was a time that Martinez had a really good average. He was, he, he threw the ball, it was about 76%. I don't know if it's like a halftime or something. But then at the end of the game, he's just above 50% completion. So, well, I mean, I, w- I was talking about like per attempt, yards per attempt. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Okay. All right, uh, All right, Kyle, that's the offense. So it's time to uh, get to our ad reads. We're going to knock these out real quick. We're going to come back. We're going to do the defense. We're going to do some Ask Sloopcast, and then that'll be it for this episode. So, um, Kyle, you want to you wanna tell us a little bit about the Mad Canadian? Yeah, sure. Uh, the Mad Canadian, as I mentioned at the start of the show, uh, will be in Cary this Thursday between 4 to 7 o'clock at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria for some barbecue and bingo. Again, this Thursday, Cary, 4 to 7 for some bingo and barbecue. Uh, the Mad, Can- Mad Canadian, um, be sure to check out his social medias, Facebook and Twitter, for more information about him and his food truck, where he's going to. But just this week, he's only heading to the um, OLC Shrine Cafeteria. Um, but looking to, um, he says he says here is looking to plan on making returns to full services in the near future. So check out check out his social media for more information about where he, him and his food truck will be heading to next. McKinney Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, the Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based company where all of their coffees are imported direct from f- farms, which, again, they're fair trade certified and organic. Um, so all of their coffees are imported straight from farms. They work directly with those farmers in place like places like Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far-off places. Holiday season's coming up. Uh, So gift cards are available. Uh, You can get free shipping with uh, a order of $50 or more. Again, if you're in the Toledo area, you can go and pick up your coffee Um, and you can save money with a subscribe and save service to ensure that you never run out of your favorite coffee. And if you're still looking for your favorite coffee, um, well, too bad the, sh- the whole shebang is still sold out. But if it comes back into stock, I highly recommend the whole shebang. Um, but you can also just go and try out some of your favorite ones. Currently on sale are the Drink from the Skull of Your Enemy, the Cast Iron, the Integrity, the Thor, the Fear No Evil, the Loki, the Odin. Uh, and all of their K-Cups, which uh, are the Fierce, the Ride or Die, and the uh, Rage Against the Dying of the Light K-Cups are all uh, currently on sale. So you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, before we go to the defense, Jared, I'm just going to knock it out here. Special teams, solid A. Can't can't do much can't do much better than than what not than what the special teams did here. Not an A+. Perfect on per, perfect on field goals. Not very good on on punts here. Not going to give them an A+. Plus. No, Jared, you know my rule. <laughs> you know my rule. No, it's no struggle, ruggle. Not ruggle, it no it's struggles. You. It's no struggles, ruggles. Noah, uh, no struggles, ruggles. He needs a sticker. <laughs> I don't, right. it, it, I, I can't sell something with someone else's name on it. Ohio State has come after me for far less offensive things. So right, if no, uh, deep- so if this gets back, if first off, if that's even original, and I don't know that it is, uh, Noah, Noah Ruggles, it's yours. You can have it. I'm just going to put this up here. So defense here, um, I thought defense overall did pretty good. Uh, the Nebraska is averaging about 30 points per game. They gave up 17 points. Pretty good. Nebraska is averaging 470 yards uh, per game, which is second in the Big Ten. Held them to 360 yards. Pretty good. Uh, So I think overall, I thought the defense did exactly what they needed to. Yeah. It it was just a lot closer game because the offense just wasn't clicking. And again, 
I don't, I'm not going to repeat myself, but the offense just wasn't clicking, but I thought the defense did what they needed to um, in this game, and they continue to improve, and I'm liking what I'm, what I'm seeing overall from this defense. Yeah, I, again, this is the second best, statistically speaking, the second best offense in the entire Big Ten. Mm -hmm. and heck, again, this is a team that has lost all of their all of the games they have lost. They have lost by less than a score. Kyle, what was your final score prediction for this game? Because uh, I know the offense completely failed to miss the mark I had put forth for them. Completely missed had, the mark. But the defense, I, had, I, I predicted 20 points for the Nebraska 30, offense. Yeah, I had 38 to 24. So one one last touchdown. The defense exceeded both of our expectations. This is a very good Nebraska offense, capable of doing a lot of things. If you think that the defense performed poorly, you're mistaken. Now, uh, and I think maybe you're just not giving Nebraska their proper credit. This is a very good offensive team. And again, this is a defense that you can, considering how they started and what they had to do to fix it, which is by reshaping their entire defensive coaching staff midseason and changing their defensive identity midseason, to expect them to hold Nebraska to any less than 17. I, I think was an unfair expectation. I thought the defense played well. Uh, did yeah. they play so, perfectly? Absolutely. Absolutely not. But I thought they played well. Yeah. So let's break that down. Defensive line, the defensive line had, and I'm making sure I'm reading this correct. Yeah. Had five sacks in this game and had eight tackles for loss. They really shut down Nebraska's running game. Now Martinez made some runs in that second half and scored that touchdown to make it closer but I thought overall, defensive line did so well in this game. I, I'd give the defensive line like an A minus. I, I thought they did very well. Uh, uh, okay, Th thank you, Hoosier Buckeye Zach, for suggesting for, for saying that you say that facetiously. I was I was really hoping you weren't being serious. Ryan Day, I, I would want over no one else in the country. Seriously, nobody else in the country. I mean, because Saban, you'd just be renting Saban, right? You get Saban for just a couple of years, even if you took Saban. I'd, so, so I'd, I'd would rather you... I'd rather have Ryan Day for what could be the next twenty years than Saban for probably two. Yeah. So, what would you rate the defensive line from what you saw, Jared? A. Maybe an A plus. Um, I thought the defensive line played great. What they were constantly on top of Martinez, uh, as you already said, they held. Uh, the Nebraska running game to a very acceptable. Uh, er, again, there was like that one drive where Nebraska came out running the option. Um, but for the last time, Florida Buck, there's zero chance in hell, zero chance in hell that Nick Saban will be at, at Alabama eight for eight to 10 years. We've already had this argument. That's absurd. Yeah. Um, the... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Martinez had 51 rushing yards and that was off of, uh, 18 carries. Uh, Johnson mm -hmm. had 62 yards, but that was off of 16 carries. They're both held to under four yards per carry. Um, I thought that the, again, I thought, I thought the defensive line did a fantastic job against the yep. run and they were over all over Martinez the entire game. Defensive line gets an A. Um, I'd give yeah. him an A plus if maybe it weren't for that option drive. All right. All right. Linebackers here, Jared. Linebackers, I still I still like what I see from Cody Simon. Uh, but there's definitely just there's definitely some weak links. Yeah. In, on, in this in this linebacking crew. And it, it showed obvious in, in certain in certain plays, certain drives too. But I thought over, I think overall I thought the linebackers did decent, not not as good as the defensive line, but I thought the linebackers did a pretty decent job this game. So I'd, I'd probably give them a B. I, I thought they did a decent job. Yeah, and I I think it's probably a. I'm really hoping that we settle into Simon and Chambers 
as the two linebackers. That's that's what I want to see. Chambers who only played half of the game. Chambers only played half of the game and had the third most tackles on the team. I was about to say that, Jared. That's not acceptable for everybody else on the team whose name isn't uh, Cody Simon or Ronnie Hickman, who are the only two people to have more tackles than than Chambers. Everyone else on the team, you're on notice as far as the Mm -hmm. linebackers and the safeties go. I understand that's not necessarily the defensive line's job to get a bunch of you get what I'm saying, but yeah. Yeah, we're starting, it's, to see, um, we're starting to see a lot more, um, well, more so in this game because of Chambers, but we got to see Pallier in the first half a lot too. Uh, what what, what yeah. did you think of him when you saw him in? Neote is fine. That's it. I mean, what, that's, that's, that was the expectation. He, he, I understand he was a five-star at one point, but that Tua Tua was the guy that Ohio State wanted. They ended up with Neote Ote. Um, it is what it is. He was a, a guy you brought in to play sometimes. He wasn't a guy you brought in to start. Um, and that's that That was the expectation, and I think he is perfectly fine based off of that expectation. Yep, I agree. Chambers, I agree. Chambers and Simon need to be the two running backs, or excuse me, the two linebackers. The two linebackers. Mm-hmm. I'm still so used to thinking of Chambers as a running back. Um, yeah. Chambers and Simon need to be the two running back. Or, oh, I almost did it again. Uh, the two linebackers on the team. All right, all right, all right. the corners, Jared. What do you think? The how? How do you think the corners did? Obviously, obviously Hickman. Well, Hickman's a safety, actually. Sorry, <laughs> but um, I safety thought, slash linebacker. <laughs> yeah. Bullet. Bullet. <laughs> But Burke, Burke wasn't really, I thought Burke did really well. He was out for a short period of time, but you look at the stats and exactly what you want. He had zero tackles <laughs> yeah. in this game. He had one pass deflection here. Uh, I thought the corners overall, I mean, they, they, they let up under 250 yards passing against this, against the second best uh offense in the big 10 i i I'd, I'd probably give him like a maybe like a maybe like a b plus a minus range yep, I think I, for specifically the corners i think we can do a minus um okay. because like you you say how many passing yards was it 248 for martinez um 72 of those was on 72 of those were on um one play uh, that was explicitly not the fault of the corners. Um, All right. Very I, I explicitly. I can stick with A minus then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, um, yeah, it's the, that was totally on the safeties. Uh, one safety in particular. And I'm being nice though. But yeah, the safeties are not going to be getting that A minus rating for sure. Right, um, what would you give them? What would you give them here, Jared, as we go into the safeties then? Um. A, a, probably a D at best. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Especially if I'm, if I'm really, if we're really locking into calling Simon a line, or excuse me, not Simon, um, Hickman, a linebacker. <laughs> if, if for this game, we move Hickman down into the linebackers for the sake of grading, in which case maybe we should bump up the linebackers about a partial letter grade. And, and then just, just the safeties get a D it was, it was not, it was not great. Oh. Um, they're not taking good angles. They're not, uh, uh, you know, but part of this does have to go in the coaching staff. You, you we cannot be playing a single d- deep safety ever. If Proctor Agreed. was, if Proctor was healthy, but he's not, but he's not, you don't have someone on this team. You do not have a safety on this team who you can really truly trust to be playing a single high safety. That person is not on this team and healthy. That person is not, there's not a person on this team in their current form. There are freshmen on the team who I think will be capable of it, but there's no one in their current form on this team capable of doing it, period. So stop asking them to. So a part of that goes to the coaching for putting players in positions to fail. Yep. I, but ultimately, I I, yeah. I'd, I'd give the, yeah, I'd give the, the safeties a D as well here and the coaching staff. I don't, we don't rate the coaching every week, but 
I think if I'm going to rate the coaches on their performance and their and how they handled the game, I'd probably give them like a like a D as well. Like it was I, not a good... like a, a lot a lot of oh, okay. Let me let me rephrase that. Probably a C because I thought the defense defensive side played very well, but the offensive side, just the play calling these past two weeks offensively had just been so boring. Had just have not been very creative to what we typically see from Ryan Day. And it's and it's showing here. It it really is. And now we're getting to the, the meat of the schedule. You got Purdue who's upsetting top five teams. The this Purdue year. super weapon is in full you force got, got, right now. You got you got Michigan State and you got Michigan. Both have pretty, really good defenses. You gotta be more creative than that, Ryan Day. I'd probably give the coaching as a st- as a whole a C, but but the I offensive think that's, side, uh, the offensive side, it's it's like a D. It's it's got to improve. It has to improve. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think I think as a whole, you you can probably again. Yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying because they're so they're so hands behind their back, handcuffed on the defensive side due to not having a ton of people over there. Cause for, uh, you know, we've addressed it before. We'll address it again. There's too many damn offensive coaches, and not enough defensive coaches. And the guy who's essentially running the defense right now is doing it for the first time. And he had to take over mid season. Matt Barnes is doing an amazing job considering the circumstance handed to him. Matt Barnes is doing an amazing job. That being said, he's still running a single high safety. Now, is that totally his call? Is that direction coming from above him? I don't know. But you can't you you have to stop the single high safety. That that has to stop. You can't no you don't have a guy on Proctor's not healthy. He's not on the team. He he's not he's not gonna play that that single high safety for you. You don't have someone who can do it. But yeah, but I, I co-sign everything Kyle just said. Um okay. I, I, as far as the offensive side, as far as the offensive side, I co-sign everything Kyle just said. It's I, I'm tempted to reiterate it for reasons, but I don't need to. Yep. Um, I, I don't know why you're. I don't know why you've sidelined Mayan Williams. This is an excellent running back who deserves carries. You shouldn't be running the freshman 20 plus times, especially when it's not working. And again, I'm not I'm not blaming Henderson, but it wasn't working. Maybe the bigger Mayan Williams or the bigger Master Teague are going to have more success considering the lack of blocking. Henderson needs a little bit more space to operate. A guy like Master Teague or Mayan Williams might create a little bit more space. They might Mm -hmm. be getting five instead of four. Now, they might not be getting you that 70. If that hole opens up, they might not get you that 70 that Henderson can get you. But you, they might get you that. They might get you five or six, where Henderson's getting four or five. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, so our ratings here: quarterback C minus, running back C, wide receiver A, T, tight end D, offensive line D minus, the defensive line an A, linebackers a B, corners an A minus, and. The, the safety is a D with the special teams an A and an A plus, Jared, and the coaching staff a C. I know, I was just I was I I think uh, A is fine for the for the special teams. I wasn't trying to, I wasn't you trying to. I just I, I just like one to, of these days. I just one like to poke you, days. Kyle. Here's the thing: Marvin Harrison Jr. almost blocked the punt, and if that had happened, I would be I would be pounding the table asking for that A plus. You get a pump block. I'm going to pound yeah. the table asking for that A+. plus. I know you're Mr. I need a kickoff return for a touchdown guy. I get it. Or a punt. Okay. Not picky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jared. Let's get into some um, Ask Slukecast questions here. All right. Uh, cousin, cousin Jay, are either of you in camp of get rid of replay? No. I certainly, I certainly am. I've seen way too many easy calls see Julian Fleming not get corrected and too many not so easy calls get overturned. Humans mess up in real time, which is fine, but for technology this good, it needs to either get fixed or done away with. Now I I'm in team I, fix it. 
Yeah, I'm in team. But I'm not. Fix but I'm out. not in team. Throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, I I still want to keep it because there's there's still plays that they just didn't have the correct angle to see, and replay shows that. But I think there needs to be more training to these um, to these referees. Like there's, it's obvious that that something needs to change. Something needs to be fixed here. It's happening way too often. It's not just the Big Ten. We're seeing it in all over, too. You see it in the it's NFL. In, in NFL, too, yeah. It needs, more training needs to happen here. So we need to fix it, not to throw it away. Agreed. Country Buckeye. I feel like our offense has become way too predictable. Mentioned that. It's in a rut. Too easy for other teams to read. Same place to the same people. Why aren't we using all of the weapons in our arsenal? Comes uh, Kyle, down, Kyle did, you, did you rip off? Did you rip that off during your critiquing of the offensive coaches? Because uh, that, that was almost that was almost day. word for word. Um, I, I think part of the problem right now is the offensive line. Um, I think part of yeah, it, it's the offensive line's not doing what they need to be doing, which will make the offense look stale. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think it's so much the play calling as it is the things that were working against lesser teams are no longer working against teams with respectable defensive lines. And the offensive line needs to play better when the, I, I think sometimes too much is put on play calling. I really do. What I think a lot of times when people complain about play calling, the actual problem in my opinion is the is the offensive line because it's amazing what will work and what won't work when it's blocked properly. Well, well, well and the other the other thing too, the other thing too is, as an offensive um, coordinator, if you see if you see your offensive line is struggling, you're not going to try to constantly do the same thing too, or try to do things differently when you know that hey they're they're getting beat. So this play isn't going to work or this play is going to take too long to to run or to develop. So they really probably limited to do a lot of the plays that we're used to seeing week in and week out. So it could be a lot of like what Jared said with the offensive line struggling. Buckeye Esquire asks, (laughs) can only pick one, Uh, can only pick one aspect. What is the most blame for the run game struggles play calling offensive line execution defensive scheme running backs not hitting holes i think we've we've answered this yes i think i I think that the interior blocking on the on the offensive line is failing right now it's the exit yeah it's the execution not not many um penalties this week this last weekend which i'm happy to see clean that up a little bit there but it's execution it's execution nomad says right. he wants to be put in at guard i but weren't you also asking to be put in as high safety just uh just a few uh minutes ago? yeah okay I, I feel i don't feel like you have the body type for either let alone both i'll be honest with you um but yeah i, I think there, there's too many tackles on the field and not enough guards on the field i think is a part of the problem yep. right now and i think they got away with it against smaller teams and they're not getting away with it against legitimate big 10 defensive lines yep who's your buckeye zach asks what can our defense do better to cover an option running scrambling quarterback i well, thought I, for I, the I, most part they did a good job against martinez the, the, the correct answer jared is having chambers in the entire game yeah that's <laughs> that's a huge help um yeah i, I think having your linebackers playing well yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, what aspect of the linebackers do you see improving? What are they still lacking? Um, Chambers isn't on the field enough, I think, is my, yes. my first concern. I need mm-hmm. more. I need more Steel Chambers. Guys, his name is Steel Chambers. How did we not realize that he was a silver bullet? Well done, Jared. Um, what are they lacking? You, 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 you got this from here on out. I'm out. <laughs> um what's what are they lacking it's it's that killer instinct of a linebacker just being able to read you, you can see how the offensive line is moving 
you, you can tell if, if it's a run developing or you can watch the quarterback's eyes and tell where, where they're going to go. It, they're just missing that killer instinct of a being a linebacker. And this, this group just doesn't have it. You either have it or you don't. And unfortunately, unfortunately what we're seeing so far, they just don't. Uh, yeah, who's appear, your Buckeyes? Appear, 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 appear athlete. Yes. Yeah. Appear athlete. For sure. And by the way, there were people, there were, there were scouts when he was coming out of high school who said that he would make a better linebacker than a running back. Like there, there are scouts on the record stating that. So it's not a, it's the, the, he played linebacker in high school and he was damn good at it. So this move isn't totally left field. Um, could you grade the defensive backs as the best in the country at this point? Hell no. Complete deficiency no. at the safety position right now. Uh, they're not the best. They're not the best defensive backs in the, in the big 10 right now. That's Penn state. Penn state has the best defensive backs in the big 10 right now. Okay. Specifically corners. If you want to talk specifically corners, we can start to have a conversation. Yeah, they're definitely one of the best. Yeah. And even having a true freshman being your best, your best, arguably your best defensive back too. I know you, Florida, I know you like ripping on, on Eichenberg. I get it. But Steel Chambers is probably the best linebacker on the team right now. So you can keep yep. picking on, on him all you want, but I don't know, honestly, this is going to be slightly mean. Everything that you guys say bad about Eichenberg, about Borland, I don't know why you don't say the same thing about Mitchell. He's also a complete liability in the pass defense. Mm -hmm. I, so I don't know why you compare those two, but leave Mitchell out of the conference. Actually, I do know why. I'm just not going to say it. I'm going to let yeah. you get there on your own. All right, let's answer these last questions from Nomad here. So we're running way over time, Jared. Um, he asked, what the, what the heck is wrong with the run game? Answered that already. We did. Um, how, how do we fix it? I think we kind of answered that already. It starts I, with the offensive line. Yeah, but I also don't... It's the execution I, part. Yeah. I... I, But I, okay. I don't know if the answer... I say you have too many tackles playing guards, but is the answer you bench Paris Johnson and you bench Thayer Munford? Because at the as much as I'm complaining that that's the problem, I don't know that that's the answer. And I, I think the other thing too is like, and I think I mentioned it too, and I know a number of other people when we were we were chatting in our Discord, which um. Be sure to join our Discord during the football games. A lot of fun. Discord.thesloopcast.com. I think there was a number of times, and I, I for one, would say over and over again, we were having more success between, like, down the middle. They're, they're, they're the linebackers are crashing in from the outside. We weren't getting anything on the outside. We were getting better success running it straight down the middle there. And... I don't know what what it was from from these coaches that just weren't doing that, but a, a lot of it's the execution, a lot of it's the play calling too that that coach days running or called. Yeah, and part of the solution to that could be bringing back a read option, but if you bring back the read option, then Day is going to have to let Stroud keep the ball. I know people want to get mad at Stroud for for not running. Until I have evidence otherwise, I believe that Day is telling him not to run. I believe that is the directive that he is being given. So if you want to be mad, be mad at, I mean, I want to say, in my opinion, if you want to be mad, be mad at Day. But this is my suspicion. I don't know it for a fact. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. Does Ruckert go undrafted? No, 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 no. His measurables, his workouts, they'll get him drafted. Mm -hmm. uh, what what sub team does per, per don't expose? What sub team does? I don't understand the question, Nomad. 
well, 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 if he can help us out here, um, let me answer another question here. Uh, is it okay to be in? Is it okay <laughs> to be an alcoholic during football season just for coping purposes? I mean, it's okay to drink alcohol. I wouldn't maybe cross the line into alcoholism. I, I co-signed that. <laughs> uh, will you actually read a nonsensical advertisement when I up my contributions? If it's purely nonsensical, yes. Uh, now, that being said, oh, uh, position groups, you mean, Nomad. Uh, I, uh, I mean, within reason, if it's just nonsense and it's funny, sure. Um, but I'm not, you can't pay me to say literally anything. But I'll, I'll let you know ahead of time and, and, and ask you to rewrite it if it if it crosses any lines. Okay, so uh, what position group does her don't expose? Um, I think, and this is part of the reason why I'm a bit nervous heading into this Purdue game, I think one of the things they expose are your linebackers. They're going to make your linebackers work. That's for sure. Um, Ohio State will need to get a pass rush without a ton of blitzing in in that game to have defensive success mm -hmm. and, and we'll, we'll get into thursday's we'll get into this on thursday's episode but they got a they got a stud receiver yeah. named david bell that they really got to watch out for too and and by the way he had a great game too <laughs> all right, all right Jared, kyle uh, I think, yep, that's it. That's it for uh, today's episode. Why don't you um, kick us off? Yeah, um, I think kick us off is the opposite of what I'm doing, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, uh, everyone, Kyle already told you to, or asked you, I guess, to uh, join discord.thesloopcast.com. We encourage you to do that. Um, we, we recently streamlined the server based off of some survey results. Um, people wanted less channels with... Uh, broader topics so we've made that adjustment and so we're listening to your feedback to make what we think is a really great discord server even better and if you want your voice to be heard um, please visit survey.thesloopcast.com um, you know we're kind of curious what you know we've we've done this different episode format during the season we wonder what that's going to look like at the uh, other side of the sea you know once the season's over um so we're, we're looking for feedback and you can really help, uh, help determine the future course of the podcast by going to survey.thesloopcast.com and, uh, letting us know what you like and what you don't like. Uh, so Kyle, that's, that's it. That's all I have. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, well, I have to, have to, uh, <laughs> have to say something on behalf of the mad you, Canadian. I lost my you, bet. You lost a bet. Your your, your high school bet. football team uh, did not advance around while his did is was yep, the bet that, that was that, that was the bet we were, we were betting that on which team which of our alma maters were going to make it further into the to the uh, division six high school playoffs uh, I think at region twenty four unfortunately my Bulldogs didn't didn't do so well this last weekend and his his carry uh, high school team did so. I will say congratulations to Cary Blue Devils on their victory. Uh, makes me wish I was from Cary instead of Columbus Grove. Oh, that did that hurt, Kyle? It did. It did. Okay. <laughs> Tonight's ending music brought to you by a Cincinnati-based band called Motherfolk. They just released a new song last week. The name of the song is Black Eye Bad Night. And uh, that's the song we'll be playing at the end of tonight's episode. So, uh... If you're listening to the audio version of this, all you have to do is nothing. Uh, the song might already be playing underneath us as we speak. Uh, and if you are in the YouTube audience, there will be a link down in the show notes where you can go listen to the song on your own. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music. And of course, Kyle, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Mother Folk. Mother Folk.